with 220 miles of track, 37 bridges, 86 tunnels, and more than a hundred years in the making, the Chihuahua Pacifico Railway, or El Chepe for short, is a spectacular trip through the great Copper Canyon region. Holy cow, look at that. We'll meet the people who live and work along this very special train line. I love Chepe, I love to travel in the Chepe, and I love to work in the Chepe. And we'll travel from mountain to ocean in just one day. And it doesn't get any better than that. It really doesn't. This is no ordinary railway journey. This is one of the most scenic railway journeys in the world. Mexico. Sunrise at the tiny station of Creel, Mexico's highest station, a hundred miles southwest of the city of Chihuahua. This morning, we are joining these sleepy passengers on a voyage of discovery through some of the most startling scenery on Earth on a very special train, known affectionately as El Chepe. For train manager Maurizio, each new day brings new challenges. Every trip, every journey is a new adventure. New passengers, new people. So it's an adventure. I'm so proud to work for it. Yeah, three minutes and we go. Our nine and a half hour journey starts at the mountain top town of Creel. From here, we head into the Taramara Mountains to our first stop at Divisidero. It is here we enter the spectacular Copper Canyon region. After stopping at Bahuchivo and passing through Timoris, the train descends into the deepest canyon in North America, the Uriki Canyon. Entering the vast agricultural plains of Sinaloa, our next stop is El Fuerte. After 220 miles, we arrive at our destination, Los Mochis, the gateway to the Pacific Ocean. Let's go! With three classes, first, executive and tourist, and capable of carrying 340 passengers, El Chepe is Mexico's answer to the Orient Express. It has six carriages, a bar, a restaurant that doubles as the observation car, and a viewing terrace. And at 7 a.m. in the morning, breakfast service is in full swing. Train manager Maurizio has worked on El Chepe for seven years. This is my job, I love it, and I'm very proud to teach everybody and to show everybody to come and make the trip of their lives enjoyable. I love Chepe, I love to travel in the Chepe, and I love to work in the Chepe. For Baltimore resident Jerry, taking this train trip through Mexico is the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. Uh, it's just always been on my bucket list of trains to, uh, to try and ride it. Kind of the stuff of dreams for a rail fan train nerd, rail freak, uh, you know, you name it. Somehow it got in my blood as a young kid. Uh, I don't come from a train town, and I even got married on the train. Also on the train today is someone who has had a long-standing love affair with El Chepe for many years. My name is Pedro Palma. I'm a native of Copper Canyon. And I've been riding this train for the last 39 years. It's one of the top 10 train rides in the world. We are about to enter the first major stage of our journey, 
a dramatic landscape known as the Taramara Mountains. Formed by volcanic eruptions as part of the Mexican Plateau as far back as 130 million years ago, and sitting at 7,380 feet above sea level, they dominate the surrounding landscape. The first part of the route from Creel to Divisadero covers a distance of only 20 miles. But because of the extreme winding of the track, it will take us two hours. There are no major roads through this inhospitable terrain. The only way to view this wild and dramatic scenery is from the carriage of a train. These difficult to reach canyons are perfect hiding places. When the Spanish invaded in the 16th century, the indigenous people, the Taramara, retreated here and still live here to this day. As local guide, Enrique explains. This is my people, this is my culture. It's the Raramuri people, the good runners. This cloistered community of around 50,000 folk call themselves the Raramiri, the people of the swiftly running feet, because they have a quite astonishing skill. Before the railway arrived, the only way the different tribes could communicate with each other was on foot. So the Raramiri developed the ability to run between villages, sometimes for hundreds of hours without stopping. This incredible skill was even incorporated into a game. This is called Raja Peri. Played by two or four players, each team member kicks a wooden ball ahead of himself in relay. The winner is the team that gets to the finish line first. Sounds simple enough. However, with the finish line often hundreds of miles away, this game can go on for days without a break. La ropa tradicional eh, depende mucho del lugar donde habiten. Cada comunidad tiene una forma de, de vestir. No todos son iguales, también dependiendo de los colores. Si se fijan, ellos traen colores un poco mates. Ellos son de la Alta Taromara. Entre más bajes, el color es más fuerte, más chillante. But it isn't just the men who have all the fun. The women can easily give the men a run for their money. The Taramara treat running as a fine art, something to be learned slowly and perfected over a lifetime. For them, this is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. As our train weaves its way through the Taramara Mountains, our journey is about to enter a new landscape. The astonishing Copper Canyon, one of the greatest geological wonders of the world. We're traveling on one of the world's most scenic railway journeys through the stunning landscape of northern Mexico, the Copper Canyon region. It is a landscape and a train that has been familiar to El Chepe fan Pedro for many years. I first uh, started riding uh, this train when I was uh, 17 years old. I rode it with my grandfather. At that moment, I, I tell myself, I want to find out how I can stay riding this train. So I started being a tour guide. And ever since, I can stay on this train forever. On this stage of the journey, we are about to enter a part of the country Pedro knows very well, the Copper Canyon. 
Surprisingly, this area is not mined for copper, but for silver and gold. The name of the area comes from the verdigris color of the lichen-covered rock. Copper Canyon is actually six separate yet co-joined gorges. The combined lengths of all these make it four times larger than the Grand Canyon in the United States. Local tour guide Gustavo first came to this region over 25 years ago. It is uh, something like 24,000 square miles. Uh, it's perhaps the largest system of canyons in the world. And the one right behind me, this is the Urique Canyon. The Taramara people believe these canyons were created by the feet of giants. The less poetic reality is that these spectacular mountains were formed from layers of volcanic lava and ash laid down around 40 million years ago. And then this series of uh, tectonic and volcanic phenomena happened to build up all this uh, uh, beautiful and, and landscape and mountains and canyons. Since then, river erosion has carved this network of valleys into what you see today. This dramatic railway line was originally built to connect the Gulf of Mexico in the east with the Pacific Ocean in the West. After much political wrangling, this challenging project began work in 1861. Traveling on the train today is Rosalva Delgado. She has worked for El Chepe for almost two decades and knows its history. The construction, it took over a hundred years. We have over 200 uh, kilometers of mountains, so it took years to construct it. And finally, in 1940, the Mexican government took over. We had a revolution in the middle of these 100 years, so it took 10 years approximately when they stopped constructing. Delayed by revolution, financial difficulties and politics, the line was continued piecemeal before eventually being completed in 1961. Over the century taken, the cost of construction was $90 million. El Chepe is now two hours into its journey, and as the train weaves its way around this majestic landscape, it is time for it to pull into our first station. Divisidero, whose name means lookout or viewpoint, is exactly that. Perched at an altitude of 8,200 feet, it is known as Mexico's most panoramic station. And with this view, one can see why. Apart from the station, the only other things that exist on this plateau are the small hotel and a cable car. Created to give a panoramic view of the union of two canyons, the Tararacua and the Uriki, it will take 10 minutes to cross.
And if the cable car isn't exciting enough for you, at over one and a half miles in length, this is the longest zip wire in the world. However, after that adrenaline rush, getting back will take a little longer. But the spectacular views more than make up for it. With our feet now firmly back on terra firma, it's time to get back onto the train. So far, our adventure has been a journey of extremes with sky-high peaks and deep, mysterious valleys. And ahead is no exception. The Rockies on steroids. Yes. <laughs> wow. As we leave Divisidero, El Chepe will be traveling at around 50 miles per hour to our next stop, Bahui Chivo. It's a journey of just 28 miles, but will dramatically descend 370 feet into another breathtaking geological wonderland. The train is about to enter into the Uriki Canyon, the deepest canyon in North America. The El Chepe train is now three and a half hours into its journey from mountain to ocean in one day. Traveling on a track gauge of four feet, eight and a half inches, the engine pulling El Chepe is an EMD SD70 series diesel electric locomotive. With an overall length of 72 feet and four inches at 120 tons, this is a 4,500 horsepower, 16-cylinder beast of an engine. The landscape is amazing, the train is amazing. So far, we have come 65 miles. And as our train weaves its way across the Sierra Madre, the passengers on board can take in the sheer beauty of the canyon system. And for Jerry, crossing the Lalaha Bridge is a dream come true. Holy cow, look at that. Woohoo! Thank God for the guardrails. Smoke is still coming out of the tunnel. That is just phenomenal. I mean, the tunnel coming right into the, right into the bridge. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. It really doesn't. Or maybe it will, I don't know. On this train, you know, every corner is a, is a new surprise, is a new wow moment. So, unbelievable. Cut by hand and blasted from the rock by dynamite, these tunnels are a monumental feat of engineering. It is here on the cool of the high canyon edge that our passengers can peer down at one of the richest and most diverse ecosystems in the world. 
It is a world that can be accessed at our second stop, Bahui Chiva, a small town of 1,300 people that has grown up around the railway. Around a mile or so from the station is the astonishing Uriki Canyon. At 6,200 feet from the rim to river, it is the deepest canyon in North America. And it is here that you can experience this diverse ecosystem. Over a drive of three hours from top to bottom, with pine and oak forests at the crest, as you descend to the canyon floor, the temperature goes up and the area becomes more humid. Orlando is one of the locals here. He is zipping through the Uriki Canyon to visit a friend who is producing a drink for an upcoming festival. Right now we are in Wapalaina, the deepest place of the Eureka Canyon. It's a, a magical place. It's really amazing. The canyon, the views, the people are really friendly. I love it. I came to visit uh, my friend Ruben. Ruben? They're making pinole that is made out of corn. They're having a, a festival this weekend, so that's why they are, are making pinole. Pinole is a drink made from ground corn, water, and spices. Corn is a crop that grows well in the heat of this valley, but would not thrive where the railway runs at the top. They are very different climates. And my friend is a farmer. You know, he grows uh, corn, beans, and he also have uh, a lot of uh, fruit trees, like uh, banana, mango trees, orange trees, a lot of fruits. They, they only grow here. In El Divisadero, you can get like uh, two degrees. And here is, right now it's like a 20 degrees. So that's uh, a, a huge difference. It is a, a secret place for us because almost nobody knows about this community. Gracias. Gracias. Ahí estamos. A porfa, te encargo queso. Queso. Okay. Claro que sí. Sale, gracias. Nos vemos, mujeres. It's time to leave Uriki and head further into the canyon system. On board El Chepe, it's time for lunch. Gourmet chef Raul is cooking up a smoky storm in the galley kitchen. Y es un platillo típico para que nos puedan visitar pues todo lo que es la región de acá del noroeste de de México. The menu for today is grilled ribeye steak with roasted cactus and onions, guacamole, and a spicy salsa. Cooking in these cramped conditions, coupled with being constantly on the move are not ideal situations for any chef. La verdad, sí es difícil preparar los alimentos con el tren en movimiento. But you'll not hear any complaints from Jerry. Outstanding. Really outstanding. Wonderful. I wouldn't expect the taste. And the company is even better. <laughs> and if they fancy a glass of wine with lunch, from their seats, our passengers can peer down into the valley below, where just 11 miles outside Bahui Chivo, some of Mexico's best wine is made. Quality control is only one of the responsibilities of local winemaker Bernardo. He owns a hotel and vineyard in the town of Serracawi and tells a fascinating story of survival. This church is a Jesuit mission 
dates back from the 1780s. It was erected by the Jesuit fathers who came and founded this town of Serokawi. The settlers here soon realized that, as well as food, the climate was also perfect for the production of wine. These vines, they're descendant back when the Jesuits came here in the 1780. So they came, they, they had their own vines because, you know, remember, they had to make their own wine. The king of Spain, he found out that the whole continent, it was very good for making wine. So he saw that as a threat to the, his economies. So he prohibited in America the growing of the grapevines. And also he expelled the Jesuits. King Charles III, concerned that the Jesuits had acquired too much wealth and influence and were a bit too good at making the local red, expelled them from the area. The Mexican vineyards fell into ruin. However, the vines survived. When we opened the hotel back in 1975, the gardener of the hotel, he came in with these small vines. He says, you know, they are vines from the old Jesuits. And uh, we didn't know that, so we started replanting them. Now, 45 years later, Bernardo has five hectares of vines and produces one of the finest wines in the country. So it's a long story, but it's a beautiful story. Everything related with wine is beautiful. It's time to climb back on board our train as El Chepe is reaching the end of the canyon system at Timoris. We are in Temoris. Temoris is special because here we have the opening of the Chepe. In the 1961, one train comes from Chihuahua, the other train comes from Los Mochis, and they meet here in order to inaugurate the Chihuahua al Pacifico Railroad. On the 24th of November 1961, the Los Mochis line from the south met and joined up with the line from Chihuahua in the north for the very first time. The historic moment was celebrated by President Adolfo Lopez Mateos with the building of a plaque to commemorate the day. After a hundred years of construction, the Chihuahua Pacifico Railroad was finally complete. And it is here that the train must quickly descend 700 feet from the mountain down to sea level. This is three levels of tracks that we pass. We, we start from the third one, the highest. We are now in the second one, and we are gonna descend for the first one. To lose height quickly, El Chepe must enter the Tomoris Loop. It is an astonishing piece of Mexican engineering. As our train enters La Pera Tunnel, it will travel through 180 degrees while descending 100 feet inside the mountain. As it leaves, the train will enter another extreme bend, this time crossing the Santa Barbara Bridge before curving once more down to the valley floor. Outstanding. The train enters the La Pera Tunnel, which incredibly is half a mile long. While below, the local tourist train is coming from the other direction. As it switches back on itself and exits the tunnel, El Chepe meets its opposite number at this historic crossing. As this is a single track line, one must wait for the other to pass. And now we're meeting the regional, the other passenger train that goes to Chihuahua now. So this is named Regional Turista. He has two classes. The yellow one is a the regional tourist, and the red one is the economy class.
And if carving a 180 degree tunnel through solid rock wasn't enough, the Mexican engineers had a further challenge. Constructing the extraordinary Santa Barbara Bridge across the river Septentrion. To make the most of this moment, the driver slows down. Oh, wow. Exiting the canyon system, El Chepe now enters a whole new world. Our train is now heading out onto the plains of Sinaloa, where we will reach our destination of Los Mochis, the gateway to the Pacific. It is now 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and El Chepe is speeding towards the ocean. After leaving Tomoris, our train enters the western state of Sinaloa and travels 82 miles to our penultimate station, El Fuerte. Then it is non-stop to our destination, Los Mochis. Before it leaves the mountains behind for good, there are two final challenges for the train. The first is the crossing of the Chinipas Bridge. Completed in 1961, two concrete piers support a three-span steel truss that is almost a thousand feet in length and 335 feet high. It is the highest bridge on the line. Although originally built over a dry gorge, the lower half of the bridge is now submerged in a reservoir named the Chinipas River in honor of the construction above. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Unbelievable. No sooner is El Chepe across the river than it passes into Tunnel 86. It is the last and longest tunnel on the journey. At a mile and a quarter in length, it takes over two minutes to pass through. Once on the other side, the landscape takes on a very different personality. mountains are now a distant memory, replaced by a fertile Mexican landscape. This is considered one of the richest valley in Mexico. This is the state of Sinaloa. Although famous historically as a stronghold of Mexico's drug cartels, these flatlands are also renowned as Mexico's breadbasket. This irrigated plain produces much of the country's wheat, corn, tomatoes, and cotton, and is one of the richest agricultural regions on Earth. 
the things that you go by and you see all aspects of the community, people alongside the tracks, people working in the agricultural industry, that's what makes this unique. It's not just made for tourists. It's um, kind of the stuff of dreams for a rail fan. The views here are broad and open and very different from those seen in Copper Canyon. Although some find them more interesting than others. The only way to come across the Sierra is uh, the train. It's great to be able to, to ride the train. Be able to, to meet a lot of nice people from all over the world. It is here that the train pulls into our penultimate stop on our journey, El Fuerte. Founded in 1563 by the Spanish conquistador Francisco de Ibarra, for three centuries, El Fuerte was the most important commercial and agricultural center of the vast northwestern region of Mexico. This is a traditional Mexican city, surrounded by an area steeped in ancient mythology. As you step out of town, it is like stepping back in time. The railroad cuts straight through the territory of an ancient indigenous people known as the Yoremi or Los Mayos. Some 40,000 Mayo live in this region, still maintaining their traditional way of life. This is Jose Luis Vámez. As well as being a healer, Jose is also a monster musician. As local resident Adrian explains. He is a very respected musician and also is one of the last dear dancers. And also the, their grandsons are very, very good musicians. They play the traditional instruments. An important part of the Mayo culture is the performance of the traditional deer dance. The deer is considered a sacred animal that used to be giving support to the people in the, in the Indian tribe. He says that he feels like he is the deer. He feels uh, the strain, he feels the, the, that, that he is dancing like a real animal. Fortunately, no deer were hurt in the demonstration of this dance. After taking a step into the past, it is time for the train to re-enter the 21st century. We are now on the final leg. El Chepe will now rush to the sea where it will complete its journey from mountain to ocean. We've had a phenomenal, phenomenal day. We're already planning to come back. On board, Maurizio and his crew are coming to the end of a long day. Today was a very good day. 
it was the weather was wonderful. Most of the people were very happy. And the staff also was very, very happy with, with the people because they were very friendly. Today was very calm and very relaxed. Today. After nine hours on their feet, it is time for Maurizio and the team to relax a little. My staff and I were going to rest for two days and on Friday we are going to be ready again to give the people this journey and to be ambassadors of Mexico in this trip of the Copper Canyon in the Chapa Express. It's 6 p.m. and El Chepe is reaching the end of the line, Los Mochis. On behalf of the Chepe Express and Ferromex, we thank you for traveling with us. We hope you enjoyed the trip. Los Mochis is the final stop for the Chihuahua Pacifico Railroad. And for Jerry, rail fan and train nerd, it is the fulfillment of a lifelong ambition. If you like trains, you won't be disappointed, not at all. We have now reached the beach at Maviri and the Pacific Ocean. And our journey has come to an end. Time is a fickle mistress, but today we have taken plenty of it to explore the incredible landscape of northern Mexico. We have marveled at the splendor of the Copper Canyon, run into a little-known secret civilization, and gloried in the joy of traveling from mountain to ocean in just one day. The Chihuahua Pacifico Express, affectionately known as El Chepe, is one of the great train journeys of Mexico and the world.